Hearthstone Legendary Series brought to you by ESO. Season 2 is week 4, and it's day number 2 to see who is going to get the spot in the land finals coming up in June 5th to 7th. My name is Frodan, I'm joined by Greetorp, and uh, we just had one player, another person eliminated uh, from contention week 4, but we're not done yet. We have one more final group stage elimination before we go to the semifinals and also maybe the finals. That's right. Uh, these guys are fighting for that spot in the season finals, which will be a land. It's super exciting. As I said before, I hope to be here, if not as a caster, as a spectator, because it's going to be a good time, man. Lands are always so, so cool. I know, like, there's a bunch of lands going on these days. Uh, America needs more, though. America That's... needs uh, more of everything in general. Yeah. yeah. Toss California some water while you're at it. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit more food, too. The portions are kind of small. <laughs> but we're going to be here in California having the lands. I hope you guys can uh, enjoy that as well. Just to kind of recap of what's happened so far. Amaz advanced from Group A in first place, and then Reina advanced in first place. And then what happened in the last series, Andre, is really tightly contested. And then we just saw one player officially was not able to get across the finish line here. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because... You know, he works so hard, or Le uh, Modern Leper works so hard to mm -hmm. get here. I know open brackets of any single large game is so tough to get through. Yeah. Uh, and especially in Hearthstone, I think. And for him to go out here so close, I mean, he still has a shot in the Redemption Tournament, as you were saying before, but he wants to actually qualify right here. He wants the, the journey to end right here for him to, you know, be in contention for that yeah. 20 $25,000. Yes, not just 20. That's just 20. But uh, we do have an opportunity for um, for Modern Leopard to come back and try and win another spot through Redemption Tournament. Just to go break down the list of players, we have uh, Shrive Crow, Kaldi, uh, Trump, Silent Storm, Tom60229, Savich, Chalky, Oskaka, Ignite. A really good set of players. And of course, there's a few other ones that people might have heard of. You know, Roger. Uh, Luffy, those players are pretty well known if you dig deeper into the hardcore aspect of uh, the competitive Hearthstone scene. So, a lot of good stuff coming up in the uh, upcoming week of the Redemption Tournament. Again, uh, May 14th through 17th. But don't let us discourage you too much from just tuning out right now because we have a great match coming up for you. It's uh, Luigi's versus Domdis. Now, Luigi's is a player that goes all the way back, Andre, to a, pl a team called Mana Grind. Uh, back in the day, Mana Grind was probably. Probably the best team out there if they just realized who they had. They had Kalento, uh, they had Dark Wanix, they had Chalky, they had Reels, who now became the Blizzard balance designer as well. Like wow. a really good list if they kept playing as uh, strong as they were. A list of superstars, similar to, you know, essentially what Team Doggy House was with Savitz, uh, Andy Cop, and Nimsh, and Artosis. And now it's Tempo Storm. <laughs> That's right. Cool now it's him. Team Magic Amy, honestly, who's been doing really well too, still. Uh, despite having to lost their fearless leader in terms of competitive play. We have Hunter Druid Warlock versus Paladin Druid and Warrior. And it's interesting that Luigi is, is also another player who doesn't bring that Warrior class. So talk to me right now on just the analysis of what they're bringing, the type of decks that they're bringing. Because, um, you know, I, I understand like deck versus deck sometimes, but I really don't get... The, lineups. Yeah, the lineups and right. how what they're trying to really accomplish with the lineups. Well, there's two ways to go about it in Conquest, at least. You have to play the format as much as you're trying to play uh, your opponent. Um, in Conquest, there's there's two dominant strategies. Actually, there's three, um, and this is something that people... The first one is to build three specific decks. Uh, to So that way that you can... Or sorry, three, three good decks. So that way you're good against the field, right? Conquest, okay. you have to win with every deck. So you build everything with the highest percentage, uh, and in your opinions, has the least bad matchups across the board. And okay. this is where Firebat introduced his spreadsheets, and everyone started using that tool and got a lot better at Conquest. Uh, if you go to the second level deeper, it's preparing specifically against a specific deck. So what you do is, all right, well, I know that Grim Patron Warrior is extremely dominant right now, and everyone's likely to bring it, I'm going to have three decks that kill Patron Warrior no matter what. And then you can go a level further and play an opponent. So if you know you're playing against something like Hyped, Hyped's going to bring Rogue and Mage. And you know that those are two decks that he really likes to bring. Maybe he switches between Freeze Mage and, and Mech Mage, but ultimately still plays Secrets. You bring the Kazan Mystic. That kind of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of layers to how you want to counter it. And then, of course, you have like the really small things about... like how you try to counter archetypes. Like, is aggro really good? So that way you just try to kill aggro as opposed to killing hunter. Um, those are the really particular ways of how you feel the lineup. I personally like Patron Warrior just because of what its uh, flexibility to do it. But um, as we saw yesterday, Dom, this 
isn't necessarily bringing that. He has more of that control aspect of the Warrior with a lot of heavy hitting cards. Just barely surviving that face hunter last time um, against Bunny Muffins where he was able to pull out a win. Do you prefer that right now? I know, I mean, TJ is obviously a huge supporter of Patron Warrior at this point. I think both um, are great. I think Patron Warrior is just a little bit more versatile. The, po the thing about um, Patron Warrior that does better than Control Warrior is draw. And Control Warrior is sometimes oh. victim of its opening hand. Understandable. And you can see that right now. Like, sweet, merciful. That's I okay. mean, he does, have, he does have the Fire War Axe, right. so he has some activation in the early stages. And it's not like you really have to have activation against a hand lock in the beginning stages. But it can get out of hand very quickly as we hit, head into the turn four, turn five. Well, it does, this is actually one of the slowest matchups uh, in the game, generally speaking, on both sides. I, if you want to go by, like, pure slow, it's like priest versus priest. But um, <laughs> yeah. this generally has a very, uh, very slow uptime in terms of actual board combat. Just because both players usually try to ramp and be defensive as possible. Um, interestingly enough, even though it's a pretty awkward hand, it seems to be okay given that there's a Twilight Drake opening. And that card's usually problematic for Warrior if they don't have the Execute. Mm -hmm. But if Luigi has his uh, ear to the ground, he knows that Donis also has an Iron Beak Owl in the deck yep. that he that saw yesterday. Obviously that helps out so much. Uh, and especially he gets the card draw with the Accolade of Pain here. So right now... I mean, what's the thought process going inside of Luigi's head? Why is he, like, tanking so much right now? Oh, I mean, you just... You want to tap to get that Drake as high as possible. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have anything else to do other than um, coin Dark Bomb here. I guess you could coin Ancient Watcher, but that's just inviting your opponent to cool Taskmaster and then Fiery War Axe. Okay. The, the big key in this matchup is to pay attention to the size of the hands. Um, a lot of times, people are going to look and see like what's on the board but you have to really measure the resource battle because handlock is the one going to be presenting threats and control is going to remove and then try to threaten the handlock right back and if the control warrior doesn't have the removal because right now all he has is a, are his bombs he's going to be in trouble but for now he's good on the first one at least iron beak owl into a uh, an armor up mm -hmm. of course attack the twilight drake Leaves him an Iron Beak Owl on the field, but of course we can see a Mortal Coil is ready to receive that pretty easily. Overall, though, oh, he could also armor up Shield Slam. Yeah, that's a six damage. The remaining three can be dealt by the Fire War Axe. Fire War Axe gains some value. You get to keep Iron Beak Owl. The thing is, Shield Slam, you still have arm a Shield Maiden, so you do have use for it as the game goes on. One of the arguments against... Uh, Keeping Shield Slam is that if you know you can't utilize that armor now, you might have the opportunity later. But, um, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, now you're disrupting his turn 5 play. Like, if he wants to play Sludge Belcher, it gets contested by 5 damage. And if he uses Mortal Coil, you can't play a Sludge Belcher. That's right. We'll so it's slightly out. annoying. It's, it's not like the end of the world. Just, you know, irritating to say the least. And I'd have to imagine that Mortal Coil is the choice here because Sludge Belcher wouldn't accomplish much if it's just played. And then Mortal Coil also gives you a draw, which might pick up, you know, the Mountain Giant. And getting deeper into your deck is really important because you don't really have that many threats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he can even, at this point, I mean, going into turn six, he's going to tap here. Oh, no, he's actually going to put out a Sun for your Protector. Right. He, can't, he can't actually tap, um, can he? Would uh, he have too much? Nine. Oh, I would have oh, no, he would have been, been fine. Been so why actually taunt this up super fast? Because a lot of times when I'm playing this handlock, I'm actually always waiting for two cards just because it gives so much more effect. Of course, uh, that's normally against aggro. I don't think taunters... Were, um, uh, okay, they matter, but they don't matter nearly as much. Hmm. Um, and also, you want to you wanna remove as much of your health as possible. So I was thinking, like, okay, deal face damage to me. I can If I get down to, like, 18 or 16, somewhere around there, that's, like, my sweet spot where right. I can eventually tap into Molten Giants. But he taunts up so quick. Like, what's the what's the reasoning behind something like that? Mm, that's a really good question, man. I, I'm trying to think about why you'd want to taunt the Ancient Watcher. Uh, the first is that you already use a silence, so it seems like the activation of it is okay. And then the second is you'd, you'd rather have your opponent hit that. Say if he has Death Spite, and he wanted to set up a really good Death Spite, he has to hit that Ancient Watcher okay. first. It still, it still doesn't necessarily make as much sense. I personally like tapping as much as I can. I'd rather tap Me too, for like, you know, the cards. Yeah. More cards, man. More cards. 
I'm addicted to the tap, bro. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. That makes sense. Okay. He so wants to protect his stores. He wants to protect his stores. Okay. I like it. So, a very simple answer to a two-minute question. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it looks like, I mean, he already has the capacity to defend against it. Because of the shield main plus the five armor, mm -hmm. uh, he has that shield slam that he can easily deal with it. Although, he's still looking for other options just in case. But he has a complete board clear right here with... Uh, with one mana. So he's looking, okay, what can I do with six mana? And it doesn't look like he can do anything besides uh, an Acolyte of Pain. Yeah. And armor. It's still something. Like, yeah. the Acolyte makes it so that way if you place Hellfire, you know, you're drawing a card. You're not really losing too much. And like I said, drawing cards, one of the key to any control mirror here. But of course, the impact of... Um, of Thorsten is, is definitely very strong. You know, Dr. Boot for six mana as the game goes along allows you to squeeze in things like the Sludge Belcher as time goes on. Yep. Trying to see what might be the best course of action because you do want to deny the draws of the Control Warrior, but that's your last silence. So cards like Sylvanas will have a huge impact as time goes on. I guess we just drop the boom at this point? The Still? boom gives your opponent the opportunity yeah. to draw big time cards, though. At least two, right? And it's contested by a 5-1, which doesn't even feel that strong. Yeah, you're right. So he is going to go for just the Belcher and the Denial of Draw. That's just really unfortunate. Um, and this is why Luigi's ultimately wanted to just get deeper in his deck, because there has to be something better than just Sludge Belcher, which easily dies to Shield Maiden, which got so much value. Killed an Asian Watcher that was taunted. That's right. He's going to kill off the first body of the Sludge Belcher. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dr. Boom or Baron getting dropped here. It doesn't really matter too much on the sequence of um, removals, I guess. Because you, you're, you're detecting a big game hunter on both sides. Yeah. I guess the Baron getting at least has higher impact. And immediately. I mean, Dr. Boom, Boom bots always have impact. I was thinking uh, you might not want to get in, but like, as you said, it's, it's the same thing. I, you might not want to get in just because it removes life. And I... Um, I always think like, so in the early stages, you always have to worry about, as Handlock, you have to worry about the brawls because obviously you can't just flood the board and then it just gets brawled and you look very, very silly. So they have to stay quite passive and quite safe. They want to put out threats like, you know, your single or double molten giant or Azure Drakes, whatnot. Um, Dr. Boom I'm, is the tempo play here. I mean, it's just stronger stats on the board. Yeah. 9-9. Nine, nine. That does 8 damage to the face. Pretty potent. Very powerful. So Oh, the, oops. Sorry. I misspoke. Uh, I, I thought that that owl was a second owl, but that was because the warrior used the, the owl. Warrior used and it. I'm not right, used to right. seeing warriors in the matchup that use owls. So. Gotcha. That, that, was a, that was an error. There it is. Yeah. There it is. All right. Dropping big game, Hunter. Definitely uh, seems to be the case here when you have play your own Dr. Boom in response. Talk about tempo swings. That is the power of Emperor Thorson. That is the power of Ragnaros. That's right, man. Sitting on two executes, no less, and it just puts him in a really, really interesting spot here. Of course, he could still board clear, but he risks his Geddon just dying to the Boom Bots. Oh, it's going to die. It's just it's how it is. Revenge, <laughs> it's called Revenge Kill. In fact, uh, if you do this and the boom bots score the revenge kill, you get plus five gold in the game. Did you know that? I didn't, man. Here we go. Ah, oh. uh, that's a bug. <laughs> Two, six damage to the face. That's, it's pretty potent, man. Yeah, she removes all of his armor, so I guess uh, you know, there's that. Ah, actually, there's no good way to deal with it nope. now that he uses big game hunter. I wonder if, in the back of his mind, Dom just would rather keep Baron Geddon than. Than uh, the big uh, the Doctor Boo. Like if you had to choose which minion would stick, because you have to order it. Oh, this is death, by the way. That cool pass master wow. does 12 damage, and then the after effects. That's crazy. You're not expecting <laughs> that. Well played, man. That escalated very quickly. There it is. Domnus will take uh, game number one. Ah, that was a lot shorter than I thought. So TJ and I casted. It had to be like 25 handlock versus control warrior games in season one total. And it was just absurd the amount of times that we've seen that matchup. And each of them were like at least 15 to 20 minutes long. And that one was just about 10 minutes. So 
much quicker than I anticipated. We didn't even get to 10 minutes. I mean, it was very serendipitous, as you said, like not being able to deal with the the um, Baron Geddon very, very early on. Seven damage is a lot, and you're asking your, your opponent, do you have 11 damage to deal to face? And a lot of times, I mean, that's a very common combo that you see with the Gromash, right? Cruel Taskmaster. Um, and very fortuitous. Very fortuitous. We yeah, it just that. happened to be what it... Um what, what was there. So you can't really blame Luigi's for not playing around yeah. that specific scenario. But if you played, um, what, Healbot was it instead? That's so much weaker on top of the board. And he doesn't necessarily have, like, a strong way to fight back for it if his opponent played another big minion. Yeah, yeah. And Lotheb is another thing that's, like, it denies your opponent from being able to use shield block easily to start cycling through or start getting through other uh, things like execute costs uh, six mana. So it'd be difficult to try to let him get for an easy trade. You can't really blame him in that scenario, but um, I think a lot has to do with the victim of not drawing his threats. Uh, as the Handlock player, you're supposed to get the Mountain Giants and the Twilight Drake. You got one Drake, and, and then you no got Mountain Giant. you know, Sludge Belchers. And it wasn't even close to activating his yeah. mountain, uh, his Molten Giants either, which is another big problem. Like it, He was trying to balance everything together, and the immediate threats that he was able to see were the Dr. Boom. Uh, that's about it, right? He only had Dr. Boom that Yeah, that's out. true. With the Ever Thorson. And then he was just reacting the whole time, which is really unfortunate. And obviously not a, uh, a spot you want to be in. You were saying that the Warlock's supposed to be one that's offering Usually. the threats, not the Warrior. Well, the Warrior eventually doing counter -attacks, uh, flips counter -punches. it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it just plays defensive, 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 and then just like anything else, at one point it flips a switch and goes ham. Now... Luigi uh, has that handlock queued up once again, this time against the Druid. And it feels like the Druid has been getting the better end of stuff. But we did f see yesterday, you know, Reynad being able to withstand the yep. pressure. Just barely. Double combo in hand. Um, so, you know, handlock still has really great tools to fight against Druid. Man, it's just so difficult. Like, I play this matchup a lot, right? Uh, on ladder, I feel like there's a lot of Druids out there. It's probably, like, the highest per percentage uh, deck that I've played against. Oh, Really? No, that's interesting. Maybe Hunter? Maybe Hunters? Yeah. Dang. But Definitely Hunters for me. Well, you play at a much different level than me, <laughs> That's why. Well, you know, actually, I've been hitting my fair share of um, of Warriors recently, but I don't mind it. You know, I think Patient Warrior is one of the more interesting decks in the entire game. But nevertheless, like, I have such a frustrating time as Warlock with this matchup, just because, like, the, the main... Threats that I actually activate with are those Molten Giants, right? right. You want to get those out. And then hovering around that, as I was talking about, that 18, 16, 14, around there, so I can start tapping down to get my Molten Giants, mm -hmm. it gets really scary because it's like, oh, I always need a wall up so that I do not die. I right. need to get rid of so many bodies on the field so I do not die to Savage Roar. Uh, and it can get out of hand very, very quickly. And that's why, you know, you have an argument against even playing super rampy. Uh, Handlock essentially feels like a ramp deck. You know, you tap and that's your ramp. Uh -huh. Sometimes you just play Ancient Watcher and Silence and they start attacking the Druids so you can be more aggressive on board. Oh. Um, and some people, like Kalento, for example, opts to do that more often and get a matchup where he feels like it's too much pressure for Handlock just to tap because then you just die. I see. Now, Domus is presented with an interesting choice here. You can play Emperor Thorsten very early on. You can innervate it out twice. On three mana, what is Handlock going to do? Almost nothing. Silence it at best. And if so, and you get two turns of it, uh, the, the Twilight Drake is going to be very strong, considering that you can coin it out next turn, and then you could Wrath, essentially, for one or zero mana mm -hmm. as time goes on. The question is, do you have the hand that can follow up an Emperor Thorsten? It's going to do it, man. You just need to draw well. If he keeps drawing situational yeah, yeah. cards, it's not going to be that useful, but Emperor Thorson this early on is pretty dang annoying. <laughs> Did you see Luigi's face? He's like, ah, oh. turned a little bit. And he realizes he only has one play, right? Well, he has two yeah. plays with the same same guy. Yep, he has one play, Iron Beak Owl. Um, yeah, there's nothing else to do. Just gonna give it up. It's like, okay, you got three. You use three cards for this Thorson to get a five-five out, and make your cards one cheaper, mm. which, of course, we know it only does three because he has the coin still, or I only removes three. I wonder if he should wrath for a one instead of just drawing with the Drake, so that way, you know, his, the 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 owl can't just easily remove it with like Dark Bomb, and he still draws a card. That's the important thing. 
Thorsten gets to draw a card and then reduce its mana by one. No, it can't reduce anymore. Oh, oh you're right. It got silenced. So in that case, so do whatever you want. Wild growth. Hero power? What is he doing? Yeah, he you know, hero, I mean, Wrath at the spell power is uh, really good. I, I, was, I forgot about the silence immediately, even though it happened five seconds ago. It happens, man. I started tattooing what I should be casting on my chest because my memory is that bad. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I still haven't found my wife's killer. <laughs> he played Hunter. Oh. That's all I remember. <laughs> I woke up one morning. She was gone. But I knew he played Hunter. <laughs> is that fast? Huh? <laughs> uh, Fromento coming to theaters this fall. All right. Well, uh, you know, taking care of that 5-5 five five is important just because it's a lot of damage on board. But now the the chain continues, right? You're still so far away from playing that mountain giant. Yep. And he does have a good turn six now. Wow. So, like, uh, what's it called? Druid is, is drawing into pretty good stuff here. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, you said it best. You're so far away from drawing into the mountain or playing that mountain giant. It's just such a difficult spot here. You gave up two of your mortal coils, which actually gives up a lot of utility as the game goes on. Like, would love to Hellfire and mortal coil here, but oh my god, no! Yeah, he's got Dr. Boom this turn. He's got Dr. Boom after he's played the big game hunter, and more importantly, he's got an easy trade, so yeah. that way big game hunters and... Um, Wait. Sink it now, and also, here's another thing, too. Even if he didn't have that Dr. Boom, he had Wrath for two to draw in Pilot Shredder, so... Yeah, it, that's It's true. just not looking like Luigi's has sequenced uh, his cards in the ideal fashion. I think Luigi's, though, does run two, two big game hunters. That's why he felt, like, comfortable oh, being able okay. to do that. Right, right, right. So, it does make sense. It's just very, very unfortunate for him. Oh man! Just with the turn. I say you wrath and draw to for a uh, for a chance to get savage or right, just to end the game. Yeah, I mean you could wrath for four and trade into it with the the Drake. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Oh, you can also uh, wrath for two, swipe the giant, and then hero power it down. That's going to be a eight damage total. Yep. Five, two, and one. Or you can just suicide the Boombot twice in for eight damage. Hit with eleven, and then swipe for the for the win. Oh, how about that? Does that sound good? That sounds fine, man. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Savage roar. Mm. Mm. Not quite. Lothab's still. That's still fine, man. Really powerful. It stops any board clear that could ever happen, uh, and maintains like tempo for this next turn. Eight to the face. Close. Okay. Four to the giant. Mm. Uh. All right. Some of the weakest boom bots uh, I've seen in a while. Gonna trade in Lothep. Makes sense. I like it. Oh, and he's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Keeping it, uh, keeping the giants out of contesting board control. It's just too low because he could play giant and taunt, and it kind of defeats the purpose of him setting this up. But one thing that to consider is, does he have lethal next turn by doing this? And he doesn't by what it's in his hand. He's only got 16, 17 damage. What to do, though? What to do? I don't know what the clear play is. Okay, so Thorazin will come out here. I can yeah. understand why you you would think you would need to do this, because, you know, you're dead to a lot of plays. You have to just play as if your opponent doesn't have it. Right. Big Game Hunter pops out here. Pretty inconsequential so far. But he feels a little bit better about being able to trade into the, the hero now. Because what's the probability that he has both molten giants? I'm pretty sure it's like less than less than twenty or thirty percent, somewhere around there. That I he has th both. Yeah. Moltons. Well, if he, I think the chance of having one molten giant, if you're trying to mulligan for it and you draw into the first uh, fifteen cards in your deck, is something at like seventy-five percent, like something around that range, like between seventy to seventy-five percent. Ferdinand, I have an Excel spreadsheet that, <laughs> that actually I, I've gone through all of that. You went full fire bet. Uh, it's out there. I just don't have it up. I sure, need sure. to refer to that one of these days. So to have the likelihood of having both of them... Uh, yeah, I think it's like 10 cards, in, 10 cards in, is like or 11, is a 50-50. Gotcha. If you have two Moltens. So he's just going to swipe Hero Power here. Maintain board control. 
Does he go for face? If he didn't go for face last turn, it feels like he wouldn't go for this. A win. It's just more of a. He's like, looking he for a card. He has a big game hunter, right? So yeah. couldn't he at least tack in with the Lothev and make it at 13? So then if he plays. I guess he doesn't want a giant shadow flame. He can flame. still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Giant shadow flame is scary. But I don't got that none. Still just a little tiny bit off, right? You can't Twilight mm -hmm. Drake taunt and play the antique heal bot. Everything's just slightly off. So you tap. <laughs> I don't know if you tap here. I mean, there you, you might. <laughs> you might want to just Twilight Drake. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But still, like, you kept him at the perfect length. Right. But you can play Defender here because yep. Defender is much more expensive. And of course, your opponent plays the Keeper of the Grove. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Or scenarios with buffing. Oh, man. That's ridiculous. And now he is he going to choose to finally attack? He chooses to clear. It's consistent with what he's done so far. Okay, so he can go for a Lotheb board clear here. If he plays Hellfire, he drops down to 13. Well, giant it's a shadow flame. Shadow right? flame. You can Hellfire a Giant Shadow Flame, or you can just Giant Shadow Flame. <laughs> Same accomplishment, I guess. Okay. He also chooses not to tap uh, wisely for the opportunity to survive in case his opponent has that Force of Nature Sire drawer. Yeah, I guess if he... Okay. Because I was thinking you Lotheb Shadow Flame to protect against the um, the combo, but if he hasn't done the combo already, it's not co coming up next turn, most likely. Precisely. So. He had many opportunities to kill him with like uh, just a Sire drawer Force of Nature combo. Mm. All right. Okay, so Pretty Lana's play. problematic, not because of her ability, well, not only because of her ability, but because 5-5 five five is hard to take care of. Do you just throw up Lotheb at this point? Uh, you can silence Lotheb and anti keelbot I wonder if you can even um, get away with tapping this turn. That's like the, the real key here, because your hand looks awful. You have a bunch of... Uh, cards that are just situational. I think he's like looking for his base right now. Like yeah. e exactly what he's going to be playing. I it's think like, he okay. can get away with tapping. Okay, so he does yep. go for it. And he's going to go for the taunter too. Does he taunt both or just one? Uh, I guess you you taunt just the 5-5. Five, 2-1. Five. He's going to hero power it down anyways. I guess it's one of those things where you'd rather just have him choose. He can't play the combo, so it doesn't really matter. Rather inconsequential. Double Pilot Shredder, though. That's that's really powerful, um, considering that it's sticky out to the board. And the variance on the, what happens from the Pilot Drops post-Shredder. Get dicey, bro. Yeah. Now, of course, you have the Natural Predator. You have the Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher and the Antique Heal Bot. Let us see. You can Hellfire and then play Antique Bot as well. But I like this Just play. Just Belcher. Yeah. Yeah. I like this play for the, for the first play we were talking about. It seems to be much more versatile overall considering the combo potential now of your opponent. Yep. Pretty actually good because he's going to get this Not draw bad. and of course the combo with the piloted Shredder. But it's still, wow. No, nothing even close to his combo. He has to have only one combo then, right? I would have to imagine that he has at least two Savage Wars. You can make an argument that he might have one Force of Nature. Okay. Just because it's definitely less versatile. Oh my, he would have loved to have that <laughs> at the beginning of the turn. Yeah, seriously. Also, another reason why you should put Pilot Shredders in the middle of your minions. So that yeah. way, in case TJ was actually just talking that uh, about that to me as he was playing right before this broadcast. It's like, always put your pilot of shredders in the middle. Just in case that direwolf alpha or the flame tongue totem comes out. That's right. Makes sense. Just gonna hero power and Ah, he's toss. playing around Hellfire. He doesn't want to shade next man just to get uh, completely yeah. caught up. So okay. uh, I guess a lot depends on what comes out here of uh, the pilot shredder. 
He has to definitely trade in now. If it's just something relatively innocuous, like a novice engineer, you can just drop Mountain Giant. Yeah. Tap Mountain Giant. Ooh, that's fine. Tap Jurassic. Actually, that's really nice. Well, it's it's good if he drops, like, too low. Ooh, you know what? He's playing around Mana Wraith. No, he's going for face. He's pushing for the win. He's got two Hellfires as damage. 10, 13, 16. No, he's, that's not lethal. It's not enough. So he's okay, just playing Mountain still. Giant, saying no combo, and then if I, he has no combo, please no Big Game Hunter. <laughs> and unfortunately, he's got Big Game Hunter and ways to draw after that. Actually, it makes it more likely that he has Big Game Hunter, that you haven't seen the combo. Right. Well, he's been holding cards for a while. That's true, that's true, that's true. He's got a lot of situational Could just be cards the force of nature, right? that are fantastic against Hanlock. Okay. I think Ancient of Lore, Big Game Hunter, it has to be that. It doesn't have to. It's most probably. There's, There's your Savage Roar. Shade. So I think uh, I'm comfortable just playing Big Game Hunter on the 8 8 and then attacking face here. You have four Savage Roar. Force him to start figuring out how to clear the board effectively. And of course, because you chose to do that, your opponent's Hellfire has become a lot stronger. I mean, this still makes you weak to Hellfire either way, unless you get a Neuertron or some kind of taunt. Nope. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he's being really safe, though, I think, because... He has to Hellfire here, right? He can actually go right. Hellfire, taunt up, and then next turn Jaraxxus, I guess. I mean, it doesn't put you in a great spot either. Yeah, and he also can uh, tap. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tapping... Yeah, tapping's okay, because... He used both Innervates, right, for Thorson? Yes. Yes, he did. So he doesn't have an Innervate com double combo play. I mean, and if you can hide behind a wall, Jaraxxus becomes really good. Because yeah. the thing about Jaraxxus is that you're at 15 health, so you're always worried about dying. But if you can at least set up a taunt preemptively, that's really good. Now, here's something to also know. I think this is the last taunt in Luigi's deck. At least Taunt Giver. He used his Defender of Argus and used two Sun Fury Protectors. Yep. He also used a Sludge Belcher. He I don't did. remember if he used both. Either way, it's one of those things where he has to be really cautious now. Still doesn't have that Force of Nature, but of course, Luigi has no clue of that. Uh, I'm sure he's very worried about that, though. He is going to actually attack in. I think he's accounting for the fact that if he draws uh, Force of Nature, mm -hmm. then he's going to need something to do four damage and get through that wall. Of course, the argument against it is, uh, is he going to pay too much life to do it? And I don't think so. I don't think so. He'll be fine. In general, Handlock doesn't do too well with uh, getting through big taunts like that. Yikes. Okay, uh, so... He's got a Hellfire, Dark Bomb, Molten Giant turn. Of course, that also opens him up to dying to a combo. Yep. Very scary moment on both ends. I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well tap. You have to. Right. Uh, uh, well, hold on. If you wait, tap, you three, go down eight. to 8 health. Yeah, so you have to tap because you still stay alive to just Force of Nature hero power. You clear board. You still have uh, your Taunter up. You die to Swipe Force of Nature, though. That's, and that's true. That's also a, a combo that's somewhat likely. He gave up one Swipe, though, already. It's true. He's held both Savage Roars. The important thing is that you know Savage Roar is more likely than Swipe yeah. at this point because he has two of them in the deck. And that Shade next Ram is, if you don't deal with it now, it's going to be very problematic later on. All right, he's going for it. Okay. I mean, it's like one of these things where can he win the game if he plays, if he doesn't make this play? And the answer might be no. So going. And it's worked out so far, but as long as Dom just picks up that Force of Nature, this game's over. Wow. All right. And now, realistically, <laughs> it, Dom just might be worried about dying himself. Yeah. You just silence that uh, that Ancient Watcher, and then it does 12 damage. And Is there a way for him to piece together another point of damage? Another Dark Bomb? Um, actually, that's about it. He already uses Defender of Argus. Mm-hmm. It's a scary moment. It's going to draw two. Is there anything that costs less than... There it is. There it is, finally. Oh, boy. Here we go. 
And now, oh. So now is that point where statistically he almost certainly has that combo. He drew two more cards. Correct. Is there a way for you to survive? If you go to Jaraxxus... I don't think so, man. I think, I think you, you realize you die by one? Yeah. Because you have the the two, the two three drop, or not the three drop, three attack. Yeah, he plays um, Jaraxxus. Yeah, and the, the extra attack from the next Ramus is mm -hmm. the exact Right, result. so he's going to have exact lethal with 15 then. As long as he sequences correctly. There is always that one chance where it goes wrong, but yeah. what a really hard-fought game in the end just isn't enough for uh, the handlock to stabilize. It's frustrating, man. Handlock is, is really tough in, in this matchup, I feel. There you go. He does sequence it correctly. Exactly 15. Oh, no. More than 15. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I actually yeah, did yeah. it the other way. Uh, you counted his damage, but you forgot he got plus average or damage. Yeah. One of the things that is always funny, too, to consider is um, you know, if that Ancient of War wasn't there and he only had another minion instead, if he was able to trade into it, it's like, what if you prevent it so that the only way he can lethal is the Druid attacks into the Ancient Watcher and kills himself? So, I, I don't know. Like It's one of these things where <laughs> it's so close with a lot of small decisions. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, Dominus is up 2-0, ready to go to semifinals up against Raynad. Yeah, uh, and which is scary in and of itself. But, I mean, he's played very, very solid overall. And it, the other thing is it's been against um, the same deck twice. So he's only showing a specific... Uh, I guess, expertise in a certain area, which is against Handlock. Uh, it's not that well-rounded, like, mm -hmm. test that you normally will get. Uh, the question is, do you actually go out here with Handlock yet again? Uh, no, you have to switch it up, right? Well, Handlock against Paladin has never been really good for Handlock, in yeah. my opinion. Um, I know some people said that for a while they thought it was awesome because you have so much AoE. And, you know, personally, you feel like you can out-tempo the, the, the Paladin. But every time I played against it, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. Okay. People can feel free to disagree with me. But I, I just like really afraid of the equalities and the peacekeepers, and they have a big game hunter. And So yeah. the biggest thing for me Gosh. when I'm playing this matchup is exactly what you just said. You don't even need to equality consecrate because a lot of times, like especially with Muster for Battle, uh, they just have board presence already, so they can just trade in your, your huge threatening minions for two. For two. Right. And then they have something else to play directly after that. So the momentum swings that you get ordinarily, let's say if you were playing against like, um, you know, a, a very Zooey type of a deck, mm -hmm. uh, you have like that just hand crushing move that it's double molten. You taunt them up, and then you can do something else like like heal or something. Well, that doesn't exist nearly as much, I think, in Paladin. Yeah, it's true. Paladins. But one thing that did help was that Paladins are cutting one equality, you know, started skimping a little bit yep. and going for more of the aggressive mid-range tempo, knife jugglers, stuff like that. I'm not sure. We'll see, though. I mean, Paladin versus Druid feels like it still does lean towards the Paladin if it can just grab that early game curve. Druid, at the same time, oh my God. is surely bound to hit a good curve. Luigi has two cards that are okay as long as he... Uh, has something to play on the following turns as well. I'm sorry, Fredan. I did it again. I thought it was Warlock. Oh, no, it's I right, just man. completely mind blanked on that. It's the same thing, essentially. You can, I mean, we can talk about Druid versus Paladin, too. Nevertheless, <laughs> I'll get dude. there one of these days. Ah, uh, okay. So, with Druid versus Paladin, I mean, what, what do you think about this matchup? I think, um, so the same thing, the same theory I think exists with we can't like stack our boards nearly as much just because of the same thing, that threat of equality, just straight up equality, equality consecrate for like huge momentum swings. I feel like if anything, just because of the early game stage, like there's in general a really good curve, especially with true silver champions uh, that are able to eliminate a lot of the the big threats off of the beginning of the board. Um, you're able to pretty effectively deal with your opponent. I like this, by the way. Yeah, you like the car hammer? I love the car hammer, man. I feel like it just brings so much momentum going into the mid-game stage because it protects like your future drops, which I think is a lot more important. This naturally commits you to be a little bit more aggressive, too, which is interesting considering that he doesn't have a very aggressive hand. He's got... I guess the True Silver Champion is 8 damage, and Knife Jugger allows you to be slightly proactive, but mm -hmm. 
now it's with this case where Dominus has taken the stance where he's communicated to his opponent. It's like, well, I've got a lot of ways to just continue to put out damage. So he's going to encourage Luigi to use removal defensively. Like, I have to imagine that he's going to want to drop the Keeper on this Knife Joker immediately. That juggle also is a little problematic because you can't trade into the uh, shield mini bodies easily. Yeah, that stinks. We'll see if that happens. I think so too, just because it's obviously a lot of tempo that you're, uh, you're giving to your opponent if you keep right. that knife juggler on. Just past his turn. Of course, that's the full four. All right, he's going to curve. So I think that a, the Quartermaster is not as high value as you'd like it to be, no. but it still gives you something. I'd be really surprised if he chose to just all of a sudden play board control and decide to play true server champion. Especially considering that he already has a Divine Shield onto his Shield and Minibot, and that's mm. already a problem. So you can just pick up the trade and push for damage. Yep. And looks like he is doing that. Uh, turn 6 is very clear for him, too. He has Sylvanas. And he also has, like, True Silver Guy. True there. Silver Guy? <laughs> I mean, if he really... Oh, gives, oh, oh, gives... oh, I thought you said it meant, like, the True Silver... Uh, that's what you were called, the car. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that, it's more than a guy. It's a champion. <laughs> now, Firebat before BlizzCon was a guy who played Hearthstone. <laughs> now, he's the world champ. True silver guy. Please, you know I mean. Greetor. You know what I mean, bro. I know what you mean. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, so, you know, if you drop Sylvanas, is that just too... Is that like uh, asking for your opponent to punish you if you have silence, like keeper number two? And you just, yeah, he silences, trades into Sylvanas, and get punished. Mm, I just, I just feel like true silver champion is like stops your tempo though. It's like playing for card advantage again, because you usually develop true silver champion so that way you can be proactive uh -huh. against the board. Not true silver champion responds to whatever you is out plus what he plays next. But if you gotcha. play True Silver, he's going to have the board lead after this. Well, he's still going for it. Obviously going to trade in his 2-5. Mm -hmm. And Kill he gets Guy. So he goes True Silver Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, Frodan. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Uh, now, interestingly enough, because uh, of the True Silver, it's kind of slowed down a little bit of the, the tempo of the Paladin. But, I mean, it's one of those things where you have to be careful now that you're Luigi's because you do have that double combo in hand. So that is a way for you to climb back into this game. If the Paladin just takes a little bit too much damage, he can't rush you down fast enough, and you just happen to kill him. So you actually want him to trade into you, you're saying? Um, not necessarily you want to, but it's something to keep an eye out for because you have a win condition now. Pri prior to this, your win condition was stabilized because you have the card advantage because yeah. your opponent's committing so much to the board. You had a lot of two-for-one trades. Oh, yikes. Oh, man. That stinks, man. Yeah, that that was pretty much um, the best topic. To get. And also going to throw out a little I mean, too. maybe Dr. Boom was better. Sure. But uh, it's definitely up there. That, that, that was like an all-state draw, not a, not a not a world champ draw. So he's pretty good at Paladin, not like the best Paladin you ever seen. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we evaluate them. Sylvanas is a great card, though. Just drew the silence from the Owl, so hopefully this stabilizes the board. With the emphasis on hopefully. Um, would you just be willing to toss in Tyrion? <laughs> And just, just like go face. Oh, really? That's too risky, right? That sounds crazy, bro. Yeah, because like, he, he can swipe. Like Paladin, he can swipe. Yeah, can swipe, Paladin's yeah. way too comfortable at this point, too. Right, right, right. Um, so toss in everything. Yeah, toss and in then everything. Play Tyrion. And then play Tyrion on an empty board. I think that's completely. Uh, Maybe you don't have to get toss in everything. You can. Why? Uh, well. I don't know. I was thinking about like playing uh, another minion instead, just to like bait out Keeper of the Grove, so you can play like Sylvanas first. But I guess that that's not also a good play either. Like, say if you trade the five five in, like steal a one one, just trade that, play Sylvanas and Hero Power, then you bait out um, the Keeper of the Grove first. 
So that way, Tyrion has maximum value. That 15 damage from the Ashbringer might just straight up push for the win. Yeah. I don't right, just... Here we go. Put your faith in the light. What to do? Oh, man. He gets the... <laughs> oh, well, it's not turn 10 yet. But still, yeah. he has, like, the full combo now. So if he draws the uh, Keeper of the Grove with the Azure Drake, he can coin out the Keeper and then uh, silence it. But if he uses the Ancient of Lore, he's going to have to give up the Innervate. But either way, you have to be searching for that Keeper of the Grove because Tyrion is such a big win condition. That card is... It's like, a, it could go six for one. That's how powerful this legendary card is. People unanimously agree. In terms of a vacuum, uh, Tyrion is the strongest legendary in the game. Six for one. It kills a minion yeah, yeah. with a shield. It can kill two minions with its body. It can kill three minions with a sword. <laughs> Just in one right. card! And he got the Keeper of the Grove, but he, perfect, had to dig, he, had to dig per he had to dig really deep into it, mm -hmm. and he can't use the double combo, but he might not need to. That's fine, man. As long as you're staying alive long enough. Uh, he still has a second interview, too, right? That he hasn't drawn yet. Uh, with he that. used it. Did he use it earlier? No, that was a different game. That was a different game from down this. So, so I believe you're correct. Yeah, There's another he still interview. has uh, that second interview. He has mm -hmm. the Ancient of Lore to help him out to find that. You want to hear something absolutely wild? I he do. has to trade. Otherwise, he dies to combo. Above everything else, Paladin from turns 1 to 8 has seized the entire tempo of the game. Until Druid just draws its combo pieces that are situational until it happens to innervate. So that way, it can perfectly load the board for 25 damage if his opponent doesn't do anything. He does that, and then does he drop Sylvanas there? Sylvanas guy? Uh, Yeah. Sylvanas and the hero powers is best. Um, if he feels like he wants to play it slow, he can play the Lay on Hands, but I, I think you don't need to. I mean, if you're also really feeling really frisky, what if you Lay on Hands Tyrion after killing the Ancient of Lore? Whoa. Uh, it's, like play, it's like playing another minion. Yeah, you could consider that. It's really not the worst, right? Because you're sitting very comfortably at 24. Okay, so w what's going on in his mind? He's thinking like, okay, I have 24 hit points. Is my opponent really? There it is. Does yeah. my opponent really have the capability of doing a double Savage Roar oh, it's like, you know, combo right now? Yeah. Mm, probably not. And more importantly, when is he going to get a chance to play Leon Hands after yeah. this turn? If his opponent's starting to draw into like pressure cards, he's going to need to get mileage out of the Tyrion. So I, I kind of like that play. I do too, man. It's very cute. Um, hmm. Do we just Ancient here? Ancient of Lore here? Um, yeah, I and guess basically have because um, on turn 10, you have the double 5 drop. That's yeah. really great. The Ancient of Lore also might pick up something very useful uh, in the future turns. Maybe an opportunity to get an Innervate, so that way you can use the double combo. Um, maybe maybe a Wrath or something, so you can yeah. deal with another minion like the Peacekeeper easily. I, I feel like Nax wouldn't be nearly as good here, a Shade, just because we haven't seen any Consecrates yet. So I'm sure, sure with all those cards, like he's like, oh, there has to be one Consecrate up there. Of course, we know there isn't, but still, it's one of the things that he has to think about. Shade and next round is probably pretty useful, right, or useless right now. Well, because he played the Ancient of Lore, he dug deeper for the big game hunter, making a big power play with Dr. Boom. Not as high impact as you think. However, he still can Elder Peacekeeper, trade into the 1-5, play Dr. Boom, and still intimidate the board heavily for a lethal push. I mean, Lou just needs to find a way to pressure and win this game. Otherwise, he is out of the tournament 3-0. And that would be at least the third 3-0 we've seen in this tournament so far. And it involves Domdis in some capacity. <laughs> He's gotten 3 0 by Raynad. And He's then he 3 0 would Bunny Muffins. Yeah. And then he gets a 3 0 Luigi's. And it'd be kind of hilarious if he just 3 0s everybody from this point <laughs> on. Just like he just gets swept in his first round match against Raynad and just doesn't lose a game from that point on. And his next opponent, if he does win this, is Raynad. Is Raynad, yeah. He played him in the group stages. And the way that worked is uh, we had the second place finisher from uh, groups A and B swap. Yes. Kind of similar. If you watch the Pinnacle, I think two, that was what they did. Pretty tough decision for Dom. This 
He's going to go instead for a board flood play, keep playing around the big game hunter. And I think that's completely reasonable. It, it is reasonable because it's like more spread out, so that way Druid can't tempo swing him. And it gives him more minions to deal with that he can deal with on the board in case his opponent goes for like a flood play. Uh -huh. Like plays, you know, double five drop. Yeah, you were just talking about like he does have the capacity to do a lot of different five drops right now mm. because he barely used any. He still has Lotheb on the field, or not in the field, in his hand. He's now drew into Druid of the Claw and he has the Azure Drake. So there's a lot of capabilities for that double five drop play. I feel like he has to taunt up here because he can't take this much damage. Uh, I mean, it's ba basically, yeah, it is exactly lethal. So he's going to trade in, probably kill the Knife Juggler, and then taunt up, get the uh, Lotheb out most likely as well. Or does he go for Azure Drake just to try to get mm -hmm. that card? If he gets Azure Drake, it's a swipe. That would just uh, be yeah. magnificent. Too bad it's not already set up in his hand. 6, 10. He's worried about like a, a push for the win with Consecration. He might use Lotheb and Drew the Claw. Both of Drew the Claw seems to be most reasonable and then trade into the Knife Juggler. <laughs> it's reasonable, but it's not desirable. Yep, I feel you. Because it's still manageable. Very much so. There's and it was the right call, because Consecration would have shut him down. Yes, sir. Instead, right now he's a little bit short. He's got uh, 10 damage to the face. But you know what? It's still a decent spot. He can play um, Dr. Boom and not worry too much about swings, I think. Do you just go for a full trade there and just oh, have wait. Dr. Boom and, and uh, Tyrion with uh, whatever comes out of the Shredder? How do you do this? But then you're, you're, then you're weak to swipe. You're really weak to swipe. Shredder and Sylvanas yeah. is actually better because of the hand. It, it, I mean, Domus is making some really good reads on his opponent here. Putting him on uh, Big Game Hunter and playing around it. Normally, everyone always says, like, oh, it's, you know, it's Dr. GG. You drop him on yeah. 7 and you win. But he's held this, uh, and he's playing excellently right now. I'm very impressed with Dom's play this series so far. Oh, yeah. The winning Shadow Boxer. All right. Well, Do you think he can win a fight against Mayweather? Uh, the Shadow Boxer? I want to go into something clever. Okay. But no worries. You were rooting I'm for Pacquiao, still, weren't you? I was just gonna say I'm still <laughs> I'm still torn up about my fight. Well at least you probably didn't bet on it. I know a lot of people who uh were sorely disappointed not only with their hearts but with their wallets. Yeah. You know a lot of people um apologized to me. Like oh For losing? Yeah, for losing. No. Great tour. Cats cats That's tweeted racist. out. <laughs> He's like, Hey. Oh my god, cats. I'm sorry, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Good try next time. <laughs> Way to rub it in. It's like, wow, brutal. At least you're a good husband, Retort. Thanks, you're a good man. husband. That's what my kid says. <laughs> Using the combo to clear, not yeah. desirable in the slightest, but uh, what are you going to do? I mean, Tyrion's already gotten a lot of mileage, and that's what uh, Domdus has done. And, I, you know, this is what I really like about seeing some of these players. It's not necessarily about just how they... Uh, play in the ideal scenarios because you know a lot of people can curve into the right stuff yeah and play well but you know how do you make it the best out of an uncomfortable situation now you can play dr boom without worry of one combos yep it that's what i love to like managing threats and ranges yeah like being able to understand okay what are my opponent's main things that they want to play here and then playing around it or playing it so that it's very uncomfortable. You know, a lot of times it's about soft counters rather than directly hard countering your opponent. Uh, and no there swipe. is no comfortable play here, man. Yeah, uh, we know that he dies to a true silver champion even if he picked up like the swipe. But it's always one of those things where even if he had the ideal scenario, would the boom boss just not kill him? <laughs> <laughs> Drake to just dig a little bit deeper. You can wild growth to also dig a little deeper. Almost right. relatively inconsequential. There's the swipe. Yes. Luigi is devastated. What you gonna do? Still so sad mm. face, man. No peaches and mushrooms from him today. And so that's going to wrap up the series. Do you use your entire hand here? 
Oh, if you're uh, down this, or do you save the equality? I think out of respect for my opponent, because of how uh, how hard yeah how yeah. hard fought it was, you would uh, just kill with boom bots the way it's supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you just consecrate and then boom bot twice. <laughs> All right. Well, I think he might just charge phase. I mean, that's kind of yeah. what it is. But I like to see the boom bots just to see where it is. Dom just might want to keep track of his RNG. Oh. <laughs> and I have no... <laughs> I think... <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> was that a picky, pixie stick? Or was, was that a fun... Whatever it was, it was wildly inappropriate and arousing. That is right. game number three in the books, guys. And Dominus is going to advance to play Raynard once again as we'll see whether or not he can get revenge for the first day of competition where he lost 0-3 against Raynad. He gets a pseudo redemption match, man. He does. Hopefully. That's right. Redemption call came early for him. Uh, it's going to be tough, though, because Raynad, I mean, dispatched of him pretty easily in two out of those three, mm -hmm. uh, three matches. So mm -hmm. um, I am a little bit worried for him, but we'll see. Anything can happen. He looks really good, as you were saying. I mean, you really showcased how how well he was playing around all the threats. It's easy for us to see because we have both the both the sets of cards, but for them, they don't get that luxury. So it's really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, that's going to be it for Luigi's, but again, he comes back in the Redemption Tournament happening next week. We've been talking about it a lot, which means you guys should probably watch it. It's going to be four separate seven-player brackets. I believe I'll be here casting alongside TJ, May 14th to 17th, with all of the players who didn't qualify, including Shrife Crow, Silent Storm, Trump, Chalky, Savitz, Ignite, Oskaka, Kaldi, and way more. The winner of each bracket makes it to the Season 2 Land Finals, June 5th to 7th, for $25,000. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to begin the semifinals, I believe. Uh, we're going to have Amaz up against Tuet. The winner of that goes to the finals. And to let you guys know a little bit more about it, we did an opportunity to sit down with Amaz to talk to him about things like starting his team, 